Welcome, welcome, welcome to the New Hope Fellowship Tabernacle Church. I am Sister Chanel O'Neill of Miss Queen's Fashions. Join us at New Hope FTC on YouTube, Facebook, and on Sunday mornings. There is hope at New Hope.
word. Because we came, we thank God for the app, the appetizers, for the praise and worship. We thank God for the hugging and kissing. The camera is on, guys. Now, I know we haven't been in here in a while, so y'all got to duck under the cameras, all right? Amen. Those of you that's on the outside, Jaquan and Shaheem and Gary and Caleb, I need y'all to come in. I need to see y'all. Because I need some real live amen. Those of you that's watching from Facebook, those of you that's watching from YouTube, we thank God for you. But we back in the sanctuary. We back at 6630 East WT Hammond Boulevard, Sweet J in the Queen City, Charlotte.
great gathering. We supposed to have a good time. And we thanking and believing God for Sister Earlene on today. She had to have some dental work done and she couldn't come out. But listen, 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 Linda, listen. I couldn't wait to get out the house. Yes, I was a little, a little apprehensive. Like, oh God, what are we gonna do when we get back in the building? How are we going to not be able to hug each other? How are we going to be able to social distance? But then I thought about it, Reverend. If I can go to Walmart, if I can go to the job, then I can surely come into the house of God. Listen, somebody got it twisted. We are the essential workers. If nobody else was open, the saints of the Most High should have been together. We should have been in the house of God. is with prayer and turn it back to the face of God. Our president continually say, oh, make America great again. But I say make America God again. We ride around with license plates that say one nation under God. Our money say one God. So we need America to turn their face back to God. We need to make America God again. Somebody say God again. Understand. Amen. What did they say? Break it down for us? Yeah, I'm breaking it down. I'm breaking it down. 
<laughs> Watch it. <now. laughs> Stop late for y'all. All right. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18 through 20, coming from the Amplified Bible, the Word of God says, But all these things are from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ, making us acceptable unto him. Somebody say, I'm acceptable. And give us the ministry of reconciliation so that by our example, we might bring others to him. You an example. Come on, tell your neighbor. Neighbor, you an example. Verse 19, that is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to him. Not counting people's sins against them but canceling them. Did y'all hear that part? Don't count my sins. Come on, tell somebody. Don't count my sins. Don't count them. Don't count them. But canceling them. And he has committed us the message of reconciliation. That is restoration to favor with God. Anybody got favor on today? Verse 20. So we are ambassadors of Christ. And through God, we are making him appeal through us. So somebody is seeing God through you. Yes, they are. With your red hair, they seeing God through you. With your dreadlocks, they seeing God through you. With that handsome smile, they're seeing God through you. As Christ's representative, Plead with you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled with God. Come on, say reconciliation. reconciliation. Father God, we thank you for your already blessed word. I pray that you hide your vessel behind the cross. The less of me and the more of thee. The less of me and the more of thee. Prepare the hearts and the minds of your people to receive what thus saith the word. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let the church say amen. amen. I've been locked up in a house for a minute. I need to hear you. Amen. So let me define reconciliation with you. It can be described as the peace between God and humanity that resulted from our sins and the propitiation. Thank you, Bishop Richard Knox, because when I was in Bible school, he gave me the word propitiation, which means calming and soothing. God's wrath. So y'all know that because of the sins that we committed, God need to be mad at us. God need to get us for some of the stuff we did. A lot of times we like to blame it on the Bible. I mean blame it on the devil, but everything ain't the devil. Some of the stuff they said we did, we really did do. Everything ain't a lie. Listen. When they say I remember what you did last summer, uh-huh. <laughs> you ain't see what I did during the springtime, no. So some of the stuff that we did
up making one view or belief compatible, compatible to another. So that means you may believe one thing, I believe something different, but it's okay to disagree. That's reconciliation. I still don't like what you did, but now we can be cool again. I still don't like what you said, but we can be friends again. That's reconciliation. Then the Bible says a completeness and wholeness with God. Y'all know how we feel like we halfway in? The halfway out? We, we right there. We right there on the cuff. But with reconciliation, that means a completeness and wholeness with God and with others and with creation. And as Christians, we should be committed to reconciling with people. That means we can't walk around with an attitude. That means we can't be mad at everybody. That means we can't cut everybody off. We need to reconcile with people and with God. Somebody say with God. God. Why do we need reconciliation? The Bible says forgive God will forgive our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. So if we want God to forgive us for the stuff that we did and we said, guess what? That means we need to forgive other people. So we can't walk around with an attitude and man because they did you wrong. Yes, your mom might have did you wrong. Yes, your baby daddy did you wrong. Yes, your sister did you wrong. And it wasn't right, but it got to be okay because we need to reconcile with the people. I got a niece that's mad at me right now and I ain't even mad at her that she mad at me. I understand she mad at me because if I was her, I would be mad at me too. But I need to reconcile. Because if I want God to forgive me of my trespasses, I need to forgive her. The people at the job may get on your nerve and you say, I ain't never talking to them again. But if we want God to commune with us, that means we need to commune with them. We have to. That's why we need reconciliation. Yes. Let me, let me, y'all know I like to paint a picture. Let me paint you a picture. Think about Jesus. The only perfect man that walked on this earth. He didn't do anything wrong, yet they crucified him. Yet they was teasing him and picking on him. Could you imagine being the son or the daughter of God, knowing that God is the king of everything, and people picking on you? Look at your bald head. Look at your big feet. Look how dark you are. Look how light you are. Look how fat you are. Look how skinny you are. Look at what you did last summer. How you want to be a thought and talking about you go to church? How you going to be a hoe and you going to church? How you going to have kids out of wedlock and you singing on a praise team? Listen, the church was full of hoes. The church was full of drunkards. The church was full of sinners. The church was full of smokers. The church is full of liars. Full of them. So could you imagine Jesus who did nothing wrong, they picking on him and teasing him and messing with him and making him feel bad? And then we make each other feel bad when we already down, when we already feeling weak. But listen, Jesus had a host of angels waiting on the sideline, waiting for his command, waiting. Y'all know when y'all get in trouble, you get ready to get in the fight, and your boy's like, you ready for us to get him? Yo, don't, listen, don't let something happen to me. And my husband called my sisters. Before he hangs up the phone, they already ready to go. Who we cutting? We taking off our collars? We pulling off our jackets? Who we got to get? Y'all know how you do when your people roll up. They be waiting for you to call. Oh, oh, that Negro hit you? So are we, we, we just going to punch him in the face and we going to kill him. How it's going down? We going to follow your lead. So could you imagine Jesus had Gabriel? He had the archangels waiting? Like, we can ready to take out all of them if they mess with you, Jesus. But he said, Father, forgive them, because they don't understand who they're messing with. Father, forgive them, because they know not what they do. So instead of responding to the teasing, instead of responding to them beating him, instead of responding to them hanging him on the cross, in vengeance or being angry, instead of sticking the angels on him, he said, Father, forgive them, they don't understand what they're doing. Why? Because of him, because of Jesus Christ, God allowed himself 
message of reconciliation. So when you think about what they did wrong to you and how you've been wrong, think about how Jesus reconciled us to God. When we make mistakes over and over and over and over and over again, but God welcomes us back. When we fall out with friends and family members, but then we become reunited. Some of y'all too young to remember Peaches and Her. Reunited as it feels so good. That's how young. Yeah.
That's where reconciliation dies. Amen. And once we offend it, now you may say, oh, I ain't do nothing to nobody. I don't know why they always picking on me. They just hate me. On me because they ain't me. But how many of us know that we have offended? We have committed some offenses. Amen. We used to show up with the intent Amen. to offend. Amen. Amen. So we need God to forgive us of our offenses. Amen. And we need to go back and reconcile some of them things that we did. Amen. Amen. When we go into the beauty supply store and they make us mad and we just slap everything off the counter. We need to reconcile with the people. <laughs> Forgive them. We cannot, you cannot force 
somebody to reconcile with you. You may tell them what they did wrong. You have a conversation with them. We're going to talk about it. We're going to have a mediator. We're going to have a meeting. And we talk about it. And you forgave them. And you're expecting that apology back. We, can't, we cannot force them to accept our apology. We can't force them to apologize back to us. So no, you know what? We got to let it go. Somebody say let it go. Let it go. We got to get over it. See, nobody ain't want to say get over it. Because sometimes you don't want to get over it. And I know right now, somebody in here is thinking in their mind, somebody watching this on YouTube, you thinking in your mind like, mm-mm, I can't let that go past them. Mm -mm. I'm going to hold that forever. I'm mad. I'm going to take that and put it right here and I'm holding on to it. But we got to let it go. We got to get over it. We got to understand, yes, you got to let it go. Uh-uh, tell us, you got to let it go. Uh-uh, don't high five it. Kayla, turn around and tell her, you got to let it go. Turn around, Gary, tell her, you got to get over it. Listen, it's okay, it's okay to agree to disagree. We may not going to agree on everything, but we're going to have that mutual respect with one another to say that it's okay to agree to disagree. Yes. It's all right. It's going to okay. It's okay to agree to disagree. All right, I'm almost done. I ain't going to hold y'all long. Reconciliation is difficult because unlike fighting, everybody has to give up their right of being right. And that's a hard thing now. I can only speak from a black woman perspective because I'm a black woman. And for black women, that's a hard thing. Come on, somebody. That's a hard pill to swallow. I gotta say that I'm not right and I gotta give up my right to be right? Well, I know some black men that's like that too. Some young <laughs> black men that, you know, it's, it's, I gotta be right no matter what the cost. I'm gonna have the last word and I'm gonna be right and I don't care what y'all say and I'm not gonna change my mind about it. But when we reconcile, we understand that we gotta give up that right to be right, which leads us to forgiveness. So that means even though I'm not right or I may feel like I'm right, I got to forgive you. Forgiveness is not about the other person. I had to learn this. Forgiveness is not about the other person. It's about you. So that you can sleep at night. Yeah. You can't get into heaven with unforgiveness in your heart. So you can sing and shout all day and say, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't adultery, I don't commit fornication, I don't do this, I don't do that. But if you got unforgiveness in your heart, yet something as simple as that uh -huh. can keep you out of the will of God. Yes. When we feel like we're the victims and we're the ones that been done wrong, we must give up that right to vengeance. <laughs> what do you mean, vengeance? That means you can't get them back. No, you can't say, I'm sorry, but in your mind, you still thinking, mm -hmm, I'm going to get you. It may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, I'm going to get you. But we got to give it up, we got to let it go. You can't expect compensation. Yes, you did it. Uh -uh. You got to pay me for what you did. You got to pay what you owe. No, no, no. We can't, we can't expect compensation. We can't expect restitution. Uh, no. Right. And then if you're the perpetrator, I like that word perpetrator. They say that all the time on law and order. If you're the perpetrator, <laughs> you must give up your right to be justified. I did what I did because of what they did to me. Yeah. I had to punch them in the face, Pastor, because of what they did to me. Yeah. No, we got to get that up. I got a right to be mad because of what they did to me. Y'all don't know what my mama did to me when I was little. I got a right to be mad. No. We got to let that go. We got to give that up. Even though you may feel justified, if you want to reconcile with God and reconcile with man, we got to what? Let it go. And I ain't talking about let it go like Teddy Pendergrass said, that TKO. I mean, let go of that unforgiveness. Let go of that thing that's keeping you out of the will of God. Consideration. Imagine this. Imagine this. Come on, y'all. I'm painting another picture. Could you imagine the possibilities in our families if we just let stuff go? Could you imagine a reconciliation with our parents, with our loved ones, if we just let some stuff go? Could you imagine in our schools how it would be, you know, with the gangs and bullying, if some people would just reconcile and let some stuff go? Could you imagine how it would be in our churches if we could just let some stuff go yes. and reconcile with one another. Yes. Well, y'all don't know how the pastor was preaching on me. Y'all don't know how, hey, big nephew, y'all don't know how I felt. 
when, when they made me feel bad when no, I came in and nobody didn't speak to me. Could you imagine how reconciliation will make us feel? I hear so many people talking about church hurt. The church didn't hurt you, but people did. Uh, and we got to forgive. We got to reconcile. How you not going to serve God because of what somebody did to you? How you say, oh, I ain't never going to church because of how they treated me? How? You not going to obey the word of God because the word of God say for, forsake not the fellowship. That means forsake not the coming together so you can watch the evangelists and the TV people at home all day long. But the Bible tells us to forsake not the gathering. So we can't just pick and choose what parts we want to believe in. So could you imagine how our marriages would be? If we could just forgive and reconcile with one another as God reconciled with us. Could you imagine how our communities and how our country would be? Some of you may not realize it, but right now we're in the midst of a civil war. We feel like it's us against them. But we need to turn back to the face of God. And it doesn't matter if you black, white, brown, yellow, or red. If we turn back and reconcile with God. That means we can reconcile with man. And it doesn't matter if I live next door to a black man or a white man. It doesn't matter who sits in the presidency because of God. We get caught up in winning. We get caught up in winning the fight. We get caught up in winning the argument, worrying about who won. But is that really important? At the end of the day, does that really matter? Yeah. Jesus was found innocent of all wrong doing. He didn't do nothing wrong. But yet they still crucified him. Yet he was still condemned. Yet they still humiliated him. So those things that you're thinking about because I know you're thinking about them. Yes, they did me wrong. Yes, they lied on me. Yes, they mistreated you. Yes, they condemned you. Yes, they uncovered you. Yes, they humiliated you. Yes, they beat you. Yes, they lied on you. Yes, they cheated you. Yes, they did you wrong. Who won? Nobody. Nobody. Unless we reconcile. When we reconcile with one another, when we reconcile with God, the kingdom wins. Come on, Reverend, I'm done. Somebody say the kingdom wins. The kingdom wins. Come on, Mindy, could you hit the lights for me? Those of you even standing outside, I want you all to stand up from where you are right now. Come on, stand to your feet, stand to your feet. right where you stand and on today we want to become friends with God Israel Horton said I am a friend of God the Bible tells us that he sent Jesus so that we can reconcile for one another 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 19 that is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself not counting people's sins against them, but canceling them. And he was committed to us the message of reconciliation, that is restoration to God's favor. Come on, I am a friend of God. Yeah. On today, we're going to reconcile with him. We're going to reconcile with one another. We want to forgive those that did you wrong. Whether it was intentionally and unknowingly or knowingly. Father, we forgive them on today. You don't have to call their name up, but in your mind, oh God, I forgive my dad on today. I forgive my brother, I forgive my cousin, I forgive my neighbor, I forgive Johnny, I forgive Kevin, I forgive Rob, I forgive Booby, I forgive Johnny, Chrissy, Becky with the good hair. I forgive them on today, God. Even if I never get an apology, even if they don't forgive me for the ones that I did wrong, for that person that I lied on, that person that I stole from, that person that I mistreated, forgive me of my offenses that I did to them. Forgive me for being disobedient. Forgive me for lying. Forgive me for stealing. Forgive me for cheating. Forgive me for committing adultery. Forgive me for committing fornication. Forgive me, Father. Even if nobody else know what I did, you know what I did. And I ask that you forgive us on today, God. Forgive me. I thank you for sending your son, Jesus, 
to die for my sins so that I can reconcile with you. Oh, Jesus, we know that you had every right to fight for your rights, but you forgave instead. So, God, we ask asking you on today that you would give us the strength to forgive those that have sinned against us. Except 
get the service. So that we can help you in this walk of salvation. And we thank God in advance for another soul being added to the kingdom. If you're watching from home, send us an email. We'll place our phone number on the screen so that you can call us. So that we can help you in this walk of salvation. Oh God bless you once today. girl pastor stacy and if you found the word to be a blessing to you on today we ask that you be a blessing to our ministry and we have several ways to give via paypal at newhope at gmail.com or paypal at newhopeftc you'll see it on our screen n-h-f-t-c-u-r-c-h god bless